So now let us move on. We have uh, spoken enough of trend and seasonality. Now it is a season for integrating effects. So one thing that you should remember as I said there are parametric and non-parametric methods and among the non-parametric methods essentially uh, you use filtering ideas and as you have seen the trends are low, low frequency characteristics and you use some filter either to extract or el eliminate depending on what you want to do. And as I pointed out differencing is one way of handling trends. We are not including seasonality here in this discussion. You can handle seasonalities also through differencing. So for example, if I know that there is a periodic component here of some period, again it assumes that you know the period a priori. In the CO2 data we had a cycle of uh, 12, cyclicity of 12 months and you, you can use the fact that the uh, signal has a periodicity of 12 and construct a differenced series, right. The regular differencing takes care of linear trends as I show you on the screen and the other differencing takes care of the, so suppose I have a pure periodic signal of period 12, then I know that SK plus 12 is SK for, uh, for the CO2 cycle for example, CO2 data. Then I can actually construct here uh, a delta uh, 12 which is different 1 minus Q to the minus 12. I can perform this kind of an operation on VK. What, what does that do? VK minus VK minus 12. If this holds, this is correct for the seasonality, then I would have 1 minus Q to the minus 12 uh, MK plus again 1 minus Q to the minus 12 WK. But this is not a great way of doing things because as we have seen yesterday, whether you use this approach to handle trend or seasonality, you will be introducing artificial zeros in the on the unit circle in the, in the uh, stationary part whatever you will be left with and here also we are modifying the trend. So you have to be careful when you use differencing approach by all means actually you should avoid this differencing approach when it comes to trend and stationarity. On paper it may look very nice, very good but in practice it can present a lot of difficulties. So we will skip this part and uh, move on to integrating processes now. Integrating processes are of a different nature. You, uh, so I am showing you for example on the screen <coughs> a snapshot of an integrating process that I have simulated. It is just one single uh, realization and you can see that in fact if you look at the long uh, series that is if you look at a longer realization you will see that the mean is not really changing, does not have a trend, deterministic trends that we have seen earlier. But the truth is the mean does change with time in a stochastic way, not in a deterministic way and that is the feature of the integrating process. We have already seen what an integrating series is. right? So we have seen uh, that Vk is <coughs> For example, an integrating process of first order, pure integrating process is of this type, right? So that the expectation of Vk given Vk minus 1 is, what is the conditional expectation? What is it? Sure. Absolutely sure, good, correct. So Vk minus 1, right? But this is nothing but your mu at k given all the uh, series up to k minus 1. This is a conditional mean. So given that the process has evolved up to this instant in this fashion, the mean at the next instant is the observation at the previous instant. So which means the mean is in some sense changing with time but in a peculiar way. We have not, this is not mu k remember, this is not mu k because first of all to write mu k, uh, we will have to write it in a different way. In fact, you can say the overall mu k is 0. How can you show that? Is it possible to show that the overall mean is 0? 
what is an alternative way of writing this integrating process so as a summation assuming that it begins uh, from 0 initial conditions then you can you can write v k as sigma e k minus n k is n running from uh, 0 to uh, infinity right. So, it is an accumulation of all the past shock waves until this instant is it right what I have written is right or not. Is it correct? Or one could write E of n and then n running from k to uh, minus infinity to k. An alternative way of writing this is sigma E n prime, where n prime runs from minus infinity to k. Maybe this will give you a better picture. This clearly shows that it is accumulation or integration of all shock waves from times immemorial until now. So, when I take the expectations on both sides assuming that here of course, I have assumed that the process starts from 0 initial conditions which is okay. The mean turns out to be 0, <coughs> but what we are talking about is local means. <coughs> the locally the mean is changing with time and uh, of course, that is also true for other kinds of uh, stationary processes, but this is here peculiar in the sense that the mean is exactly the previous observation. Whereas, for stationary processes also if it was an AR1 process it will be true as well. For example, instead of Vk minus 1 I had 0 0.8 Vk minus 1 then expectation of Vk given Vk minus 1 would be 0 0.8 Vk minus 1 locally the mean will change. But this is a peculiar thing where the, the, this observation determines the mean of the next one the conditional mean. The other way of looking at it and if you look at the history of this integrating processes which were again observed by Box, Box made enormous contributions to time series his full name is George Box. <coughs> what uh, he and his researchers uh, uh, colleagues observed that there are series which look very uh, same similar regardless of the shifts in the series. If you look at the entire series locally they may be different in terms of mean, but overall they look very uh, similar. And of course, you can think of it from this uh, random walk viewpoint as well. So, the way the integrating process was born is that you say even if I shift the series by a certain amount the overall process remains the same. In other words, uh, it should be insensitive to the shifts in mean for example, here uh, if d of q inverse is the polynomial uh, your regressive auto regressive polynomial you would say that some for some constant c if I shift v k it should be the same as this. So, local uh, the, uh, shifts in the series should not cause a problem in the sense they, lo they should look very similar and from this you can derive a condition straight away that d of 1 is 0. You can I leave it as a simple exercise to show that this demands that uh, when I evaluate the polynomial with q replaced by 1 it should turn out to be 0. That is a fairly straightforward to see because you have d of q inverse operating on c to be 0 and this is this should be true for all non-zero constants. So, the only way this can happen is when d of 1 is 0 because d of q inverse operating on c should be 0 c is a constant. What this means is invariably the d of q inverse should have a factor of 1 minus q inverse necessarily right. This straight away implies that d of q inverse should be of this form 1 minus q inverse times some d prime of q inverse. So, that d of 1 is necessarily 0 where d prime is such that d prime of 1 is not 0. You can have 1 minus q inverse raised to many powers also that is not an issue, but at least there should be 1 minus q inverse and that is how the integrating process can be thought of as well. So, obviously, how do you uh, handle the 
integrating process well as I said through the differencing operation and together when you plug when you put together the integrating effect along with the stationary one a multiplicative model is born the an arima model is born where we say an arima model of order p d uh, m is an arma model on a series that is differenced d times that is another way of looking at an, an arima model that is if i difference the series d times then i end up with a stationary and invertible series for which i can fit an arma model of orders p and m that, that's a very easy way of understanding and you should not confuse this nabla d that i have used nabla raised to d with the other operator that we had seen earlier do not think that one minus q inverse raised to d is the same as one minus q to the minus d there are obviously they are obviously two different operators so be careful very often this one minus q to the minus d is denoted as nabla subscript d but again that depends on the author but th this is general convention that's used so these are your arima models now the question is how do i know integrating effects are present right but uh, we'll we'll talk about it very very soon i just i'm showing you the transfer function operator full transfer function operator form standard thing there is nothing i've just replaced the c and d with the respective polynomials nothing much you have to determine d first by suitable differencing now that is where one has to exercise caution let us say you have detected the presence of an integrating effect there are tests that are available the, these are called unit root tests and i'm going to very briefly talk about it a bit later but let's say you have figured out there is an integrating effect and now the remedy for handling integrating effects is differencing there is no that's by default the the, uh, the remedy that's used how do you determine you difference once and then you again subject the series to test and so on but one has to be careful in not to over difference how else it cannot be Why, okay i mean that's not the answer to the question but i compute the expectation so vk is vk minus 1 plus ek i mean we are this is only true for a purely integrating process so you have expectation given k minus 1 again here expectation of vk minus 1 given information up to k minus 1 So now you you have the answer. You are given information up to k minus one. What do you expect, right? So Saturday, for example, if I give you quiz marks, I'll ask you what do you expect. That whatever you got is what you expect, right? So I mean you'll change your expectation. So expectation of v k minus one given k minus one is v k minus one. The second term by definition of white noise is zero because it doesn't depend on its past. The best prediction is the mean. Ah, that's different. That is, like we know only that k minus one is constant, right? Correct. So when we write like this, the notation means you are given up to k minus one. If you are given only v k minus one, that would be explicitly indicated. Like you have written second segment is given v k minus one. Where? Yeah, this is correct. Oh, I'm so sorry. Correct, correct. Yeah, even then it's okay. Even then it's correct. There's nothing wrong. sorry yeah thank you but even then the result doesn't change even if you are given vk minus 1 the answer is correct because expectation of ek given vk minus 1 is zero anyways okay anyway but thanks yeah you should correct it yeah you can tell your friends that you we went through some fascinating stuff <laughs> anything else we have some time one more minute before we adjourn we'll continue the discussion tomorrow certainly tomorrow we are going to start off on the fourier part